Cell shaders just got a massive upgrade in Blender, and it blew my mind. From the beginning, my goal when making cell shaders has been to make them react to different colored lights in a scene. And in my previous tutorial, we actually succeeded in doing just that. But it had a few limitations. So, after some great feedback from you guys, and a few weeks of problem solving, the ultimate cell shader is now complete. And I'm going to show you how to make it. But first, welcome to the Comfy Mug channel. My name is Christian, and I spend countless hours learning how to make anime stuff in Blender so that you don't have to. So, make sure to like and subscribe with notifications enabled so you don't miss out. And if you want to support my channel and get some custom anime assets in return, check out my Patreon. The first tier is only $2 a month, but you get a special discount if you pay for the whole year. So, check out the link in the description. Your support there really helps me out. Now, I'll be starting from where we left off in the previous tutorial. So, if you haven't seen that yet, go catch up on part 1 first, and then come back here and we'll get started on part 2. But, after reconfiguring our original setup with the settings you see on screen, we'll replace our gradient with a vector rotate, separate XYZ, a math node set to subtract, and another set to multiply, and a color ramp set to ease. We'll then set the multiply's lower value to 1, and connect each node like so. Making sure to plug the window vector output from our texture coordinate node into our vector rotate. This will give us a truly 2D gradient, which you can adjust using the vector rotate to manipulate the angle, subtract to determine the elevation, and the multiply to increase or decrease the sharpness, with a color ramp for the proper gradient style. After that, we can duplicate our subtract and color ramp, changing it to constant, and connect the shader to RGB to the top value of the subtract. We'll then add a mix color node in front of our overlay and set it to lighten with our color ramp connected to the B input. This gives our shader the ability to get overexposed by a light source, with the subtract controlling the level of exposure. Now, here's where the really fun part begins, because I'm about to teach you something I didn't even think was possible until a week ago, and it's super easy to make. First, we'll add four color ramps and four mix color nodes in the order you see on screen. The color ramps on each end will change to ease, and the first white stop's position set to 0.2. And for the two middle color ramps, we'll set them to constant, but this time with their color stops reversed, and the top one's black stop position set to 0.312. As for our mixed colors, the first will be set to saturation, with its A input color set to white, with a saturation level of 0.001. This is a very important detail. The second will keep as a mix and change the factor to 0, and the third will be changed to value with a factor of 0.1 and a B input color turned to black. And for our final mix, we'll switch it to darken with the factor cranked all the way up. Connect each node as you see on screen, making sure to plug our shader to RGB into the first color ramp and the B input of our saturation mix. Now, to show you what we just did, let's make sure our sunlight is set to white, and add a point light next to our Suzanne with any color you want. And if we connect our last color ramp to the material output, we'll see that our sun has no effect on our Suzanne, because we just made a filter, so to speak, for our diffuse that only reacts to saturated light, allowing us to add a saturation mix between our hue and overlay with our last color ramp plugged into the factor, and our shader to RGB connected to the B input, and after connecting our light into the material output, our shader will not only react to the hue of the colored light, but also its saturation. And if we connect our value mix to the factor of our hue, we can control the way our colored light blends with the original colors of our shader. For daytime scenes, or scenes with a very powerful light, we'll leave this mix's factor at zero. But for scenes that are much darker, we can change the factor to 1 to give our saturated light another level of shading. And also, if you want to change your cell shader to grayscale, all you need to do is change each color stop's saturation to 0.001, allowing the colored light to still affect the shader even though it's completely grayscale. 
But if you want to learn more about making anime shaders in Blender, check out my tutorial on turning photorealistic shaders into stylized ones. Remember to like and subscribe to the channel, and comment your thoughts on this shader. This tutorial was inspired by many of your comments on my previous video, and I'm always interested in hearing what you guys are up to. And again, if you want to help me make these videos and get some anime goodies while you're at it, make sure to subscribe to my Patreon. My patrons are the reason why I can make these tutorials in the first place, and I am so honored and grateful to have you all in this community. Thank you so much for your support. And thank you, the viewer, for watching to the end of the video. I hope you have a comfy day, and I'll see you here next time at the Comfy Mug.